With everything going on in the world today, hypersonics has become the new buzzword, and everyone's talking about everyone's hypersonic capability. So what we're going to look at is Russia's hypersonic capability. We're going to see if it's actually a threat. This is specifically the KH-47M2 Kinzel, which is an air launch but also has surface launch capabilities hypersonic cruise missile. So first we're going to look at exactly what hypersonic means. All right. Hypersonic, by definition, is 3,500 miles per hour, or 5,633 kilometers per hour, or 1.6 kilometers per second. Think about that number and make sure you got that number. A mile or 1.6 kilometers a second. So, it's a mile if you have your flag on the moon, and it's 1.6K if you don't. So now let's go ahead and look at the KH-47M2 Kinzel. NATO reporting named Killjoy is a Russian nuclear-capable hypersonic aeroballistic air-to-surface missile. It is a claimed range, important to remember that claimed range, of more than 2,000 kilometers, 1,200 miles, Mach 12 speeds, 2.5 miles a second, and an ability to perform evasive maneuvers at every stage of its flight, which is incredibly important to missile defense. It can carry both conventional and nuclear warheads. It can be launched from TU or two 22M3 bombers or MiG, 31Ks interceptors. It has been deployed at air bases in Russia's Southern Military District and Western Military District. And there's a, there's a nice little picture of it. The missile is designed to hit NATO warships posing a threat to strategic missile systems in European Russia and destroy NATO missile defense systems. Ballistic missile defense ships land objects close to the Russian borders. It is allegedly designed to overcome any known or planned NATO air or missile defense systems, including MIM-104 Patriot, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, and Aegis Combat System. Rather than using the more recent hypersonic glide and scramjet missile designs, it uses the more classic ballistic missile technology at greater speeds. By definition, cruise missiles, uh, or hypersonic glide vehicles, have a lateral surface which provides lift because they don't have an arc okay normally those type of things fly a more flat trajectory and they drop in their maneuvering and they can do whatever they need to do okay uh cruise missiles specifically fly a very low and flat pattern which is why they need those lateral surfaces to provide lift so that they don't just crash into the ground three feet in front of them like we often see well the s300 has done that a couple times as well as the pants here not familiar with the scramjet but i'm sure if i was i'd make fun of it because it flies at hypersonic speeds within the atmosphere, the air pressure in front of it forms a plasma cloud as it moves absorbing, as, uh, absorbing radio waves. Plasma stealth. Okay. The high speed of Kinzel gives it better target penetration characteristics than lighter, slower cruise missiles with advanced maneuvering capabilities, high precision, hypersonic speed. Uh, some sources give it the name Carrier Killer due to its alleged ability to disable and possibly even sink a 100,000 ton supercarrier in a single strike. That's specifically about the United States. I'm not familiar with any other country that has a supercarrier other than the United States. Most other countries have like one carrier. Like Russia has one in their whole Navy. Just one. It was built in like the 1950s with a mass of 2,000 kilograms, 4,400 pounds, and a speed of Mach 12. Now you'll hear that a couple times, uh, Mach 10, Mach 12, somewhere in there is its max speed, right? Because they're not going to be specific. Um, including a 500 kilogram warhead and the other parts of the missile, the Kinzel has more than 16.9 gigajoules of kinetic energy or the equivalent of 4,000 kilos of TNT. That's a, that's a lot. I mean, this is the thing. If you hit anything at Mach 12, it doesn't even need to be ballistic and explosive. Like it, it, you're gonna fucking hurt something like that's just a lot of speed to be moving at but we'll continue russian media claims media okay the missiles range is 2,000 kilometers 1200 miles or 1100 uh, whatever that is when carried by the mig 31k and 3,000 miles when carried by the tu 22 m3 2 m3 i don't fucking know okay some Western press media and specialist consultant have expressed reservations about the capabilities of the device. That's also important. So keep in mind, this is not in ICBM territory. Remember we talked about it in the last video, and I'll go ahead and bring that up. Intercontinental ballistic missile is a ballistic missile with a range greater than 5,500 kilometers or 3,400 miles. So 2,000 is not in that category. 
Designed in 2017, and the first time it ever saw operational use was actually 2019, um, and a stationary target. Unfortunately, we cannot confirm whether or not from any outside source other than what they're telling us that it actually destroyed the target. Now, keep in mind, every time we look at an American system versus a Russian system, America 100% of the time undershoots their, their capabilities. They sell themselves short like this. We can't do that. And they just sell themselves short. And we're seeing more and more that Russia is way overselling themselves. So somewhere in the middle there is where everybody's capabilities lie. It says to overcome, allegedly designed to overcome any known or planned NATO air missile defense systems, including Patriot, Thad, and Aegis. Knowing what I know about Thad, Patriot, and Aegis. Okay, so here's the way radars work. Here, let's let's just go ahead and go into a little bit of radar theory. Radars, uh, just like I talked about in my last video, phased array radars push out radiation at almost the speed of light. It's the speed of radio, but the only reason it's not the speed of light, because radio moves at the speed of light in a vacuum, is because we have the atmosphere and gravity. It slows it down just a, just just a smidgen, just just a bit, right? Um, it's still over 200,000 kilometers, or excuse me, 200 million kilometers a second, okay? That's the speed of light. So if you have an object traveling at Mach 12 and an object traveling at uh, light is like Mach 700, okay? Detection is still there, but then they also talk about this thing that I've never heard of in my life that I really, I, I you know, I probably should learn more up on because I've never heard of it, right? Plasma stealth. And the reason why I think that's kind of silly is because it's it's moving this fast, you know, and it, 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 cause, it causes a plasma cloud, right? We've seen um, aircraft that break the sound barrier and they get that little cloud in front of them. That doesn't stop radars. Never has, never, never will, okay? So, and, and this is how I know. Let's look at a Scud. Now, Scuds were designed by the Russians back in like the 70s, and they've had tons of variants. They have extended range ones. They have Scud, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. Uh, they might even have some Echoes nowadays, all right? Um, they have all sorts of different types of capabilities with Scuds, but they've sold them to everybody. They've sold them to Iran. They've sold them to Iraq. They've sold them. Pick a country that doesn't like the United States, and they probably have their hands on some Scuds. Maximum speed of a Scud built in the 1970s is Mach 4, or 1.7 kilometers a second. 1.1 miles a second. That's hypersonic. Just in case you were wondering. So Russia was hitting hypersonic speeds in the 70s. In the 70s, they were hitting hypersonic speeds. Wow. The thing is, Scuds were successfully shot down by MIM-104 Patriot in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait, in Qatar, in UAE, um, in... Actually, I think those are all the countries that have shot them down. So that thing is hypersonic and it's being engaged and destroyed by U.S. Patriot. Now, granted, the version in 1991 wasn't as good as the version in 2003, which is not as good as the version in 2022. So systems constantly innovate. I decided, well, let's go ahead and look at the American V-2 missile program. The first American V-2 took off in 1946 from the blockhouse at White Sands Proving Ground, which is now White Sands Missile Range. This is directly after Operation Paperclip. I did a report on that as well. Um, I was actually at the blockhouse. I, I think the video is here on YouTube, so I'm super excited about that if you guys wanna go check it out. Um, but the maximum speed of a V2 is 5,760 kilometers an hour. Now, is that faster? Is that hypersonic? So let's do some math. Let's do some math. I'm gonna do the math right here with you guys with me. So let's do 5,760. So that's kilometers an hour. So you need to divide that by 60 to give you kilometers per minute, which gives you 96. And then divide that again by 60 to give you per second, which gives you, huh, 1.6 kilometers a second. Kind of makes it silly that people are boasting about hypersonics in 2022 when Uncle Sam was hitting it in 1946. It's not like anyone ever put a human in something that went that fast. Oh wait, the Saturn V has a maximum speed of 9,840 kilometers an hour. So let's go ahead and math that again. 9,840 kilometers an hour divided by 60 gives you the kilometers per minute, which is 164 divided by 60 again gives you 2.7 kilometers a second. In 1969, with a couple of people on board headed for the moon. Now, if you want to come into my comment section and you want to have a conversation about whether or not the U.S. landed on the moon, I just have one thing to say to you. 
the U.S. government can't even keep our pay right most of the time, and you think they have the ability to cover that up? Come on. Don't be a goof. Now, I know there's a certain exit velocity you need to achieve to get out of Earth's gravitational pull, and I know Russia did achieve that first with Sputnik. They had the first spacecraft. So, that might be... Well, they put the first object in orbit. The first time anyone crossed the, the Kármán line, which is 100 kilometers up, uh, was the US V-2 missile program. They also had the first images of the curvature of the Earth, and that was also in 1946. Kind of a funny story about the V-2 missile program. They actually had a gyro that they put in backwards. They put it in upside down um, in the V-2, which is where the guidance system was in, in the nose of it. And instead of going north like it was programmed to, it went south because it thought south was north and north was south, right? Uh, and it ended up impacting in a uh, cemetery outside Juarez, Mexico. So it's kind of an interesting thing you can go look up. Can the U.S. intercept hypersonic missiles? Now, this is just a Google search. I didn't really look into this too much. So, can the U.S. intercept hypersonic missiles? U.S. defense officials have stated that both existing terrestrial and space-based sensor architectures are insufficient to detect and track hypersonic weapons. Yep. Absolutely. So, here's the thing. Am I... Is this video going to be an end-all, be-all? Are you going to completely understand that the U.S. has the ability to engage hypersonic missiles? No. I am just here to explain in a reasonable way that hypersonics are nothing new. And that if you think in 80 years that the United States has been hypersonic and in the 60 years that Russia has been hypersonic, that they haven't been innovating these things, you are incorrect. I just, I hate it when people throw buzzwords that they don't fully understand. What about hypersonics? Patriots been engaging hypersonics since the 90s, by definition. Over half of all mid-range ballistic missiles, just pick a missile that a country has and look up its max speed. And if it is faster than 1.6 kilometers per second or one mile per second, it is a hypersonic object. Congratulations. You have described half, if not two-thirds of all mid-range ballistic missiles that every country in the world possesses. Why is it not as big as a threat as it could be? Does it have ground launch capability? 2,000 uh, potential kilometers. Absolutely. But what bothers me is when you see 2,000 kilometers when it's carried by the MiG and 3,000 when it's carried by the, the M22 M3. That tells me that a large portion of that number of how far that thing can reach is based on the air platform that's carrying it. Now, naturally, a bomber is going to have a far greater range than a MiG carrying a 5,000 pound uh, explosive. So how much of that is actually the, the missile itself and how much of that is the aircraft carrying it? Which then leads to speculation that is it really that good if you have to get it super close to use it? Because then when you run into near peer threats that have layered air defenses, you're not going to be able to get close. You're not even going to get into the airspace before either they send friendly aircraft to go annihilate you or they take you out with a SAM site. This is a threat on both sides, right? Which is why the U.S. relies so heavily on the Tomahawk missile. Now, I couldn't find an exact number of how many Kinzels are, are in service. That, that number is just not out there. Couldn't find it. I couldn't even find how many they produced. I couldn't find anything along those lines. But I did find out exactly uh, how many Tomahawk missiles, well, not exactly, around about number of Tomahawks. Each missile cost the Navy more than $1 million. And in 2020, it was two years ago, we had around 4,000 Tomahawks. Let's do some quick math. Uh... A million dollars a piece, 4,000 Tomahawks, that is $4 billion worth of fuck you. I don't know if even the U.S. has 4,000 important targets to hit with Tomahawk missiles. Now, that's not also to consider the, uh, the anti-ship missiles that we have, the uh, stealth anti-ship missiles, excuse me, I can't remember exactly the designation there, I was looking into those, couldn't find a number on them. Couldn't find a number on a whole bunch of other missiles that we have. I did have one individual comment about the Russian Kinzel stating that how are you going to engage something that travels at 12,000 miles an hour? It's a valid point. I don't know. We did it in the 80s. 
He shot down a satellite that was traveling 17,000 miles an hour. The satellite was traveling at over 17,000 miles an hour. The U.S. is just like, fuck it, we're gonna, let's shoot it with a jet. Let's fucking full send. So 12,000 miles an hour, we've shot something at 17,000 miles an hour. We've shot things kind of everywhere in between. So, again, am I sitting here trying to convince you that the U.S. is impenetrable and, and without any faults and there's no weaknesses in any U.S. capability? No. It would be asinine to have that mentality. I cannot say that about um, other countries out there. But we don't sit here and say that we are without faults. Because if you say you are without faults, you are content with your level of protection. And the U.S. is never content with its level of protection. We can always do better. Every time we design something, every time we build something, we look at it and we go, how can we make it better? How can we innovate more? How can we push it to the next level and keep us that far ahead? I don't think people understand how far the U.S. military is ahead of everybody else. The U.S. will never say that its systems can never be beaten because there's always something that can be done better. Do not give in to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing, and I will see you guys right here next time. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload videos and I go live, because I'd really like to interact with you guys. I go live every Wednesday and Friday uh, here on YouTube. So see you next time.